Hello from Brussels. I'm very pleased to be with you today on the occasion of the Civis Days on Sustainability, Education for a Greener Tomorrow. It's very unusual circumstances though. Higher education institutions in Europe and worldwide are so deeply affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. But I'm glad you maintain this event in a digital format. It means more people can actually participate and bring insights to the very pertinent discussion themes. Green mobility, education across disciplines and digital transformation of higher education. And the topics are all at the heart of the work of the European Universities Initiative. We know it's a fact that societal challenges that the world faces are very complex. They are tightly coupled to each other and they are dynamic. So to cope with it, there is no other way than to join resources and expertise, to cooperate and work together towards common goals. And this is what we asked the 41 European universities. But we also ask the alliances to go further, to aim for a strategic, structural and sustainable cooperation across disciplines, countries and languages to try to find solutions that show that they are more than their parts. And I'm glad this is what Civis is strongly committed to. The five major challenges or hubs you are working on are extremely relevant. Climate, health, digital, cities and society. And the theme of the Civis days being green education, this is a top priority for Europe. The European Green Deal is the EU's new growth strategy. And clearly, the higher education sector has a key role to play in accelerating the ecological transformation of our societies. And a responsibility to do that in an inclusive manner. The Commission tabled a communication end of September on achieving the European education area by 2025. And you will see European universities are seen as pioneers to make the area a reality. That also goes for the area's green dimension. The communication identified a mix of needed changes for education to contribute to the green transformation. This spans over changes in people's behaviour, integrating environmental sustainability perspectives across disciplines and investments in skills to increase the number of professionals in climate neutral jobs of the future. Concretely, the Commission proposes four initiatives. First, an Education for Climate coalition. It will mobilize expertise, networking and support creative approaches with teachers, pupils and students. It will support pledges and concrete actions to change sustainability behaviour. Second, a Council recommendation on education for environmental sustainability. This will provide a policy guidance and support for schools, higher education institutions and teachers. In parallel, the Commission will develop a European competence framework to assess knowledge, skills and attitudes on climate change and sustainable development. Third, the Researchers at Schools initiative. It's aimed at bringing science to schools. Young researchers, sported by the Marie Sklodowska Curie actions, will engage with teachers and pupils on science related to the green transition. The Commission will also help with investments in green education infrastructure. Unfortunately, most schools and many university buildings are not equipped to face the demand for new competences and pedagogies, or they do not meet today's energy standards. The upcoming new EU's seven-year budget will provide ample opportunities for financial support for the green transition. The recovery plan, New Generation EU, can support the higher education sector. And we count on the future Erasmus Plus programme, which will be bigger, more inclusive, more digital and also greener. 
all this highlights that your focus on sustainability is really more than timely. At the same time, let me congratulate you for your drive to engage with the local and regional dynamics and your objective of developing a digital campus. This really proves that you are already on the pioneering path. The success of the European University Alliances will depend on how much they manage to involve students. After all, it's their future we are preparing for, and they should have an active role in it. Therefore, big congratulations that you will launch the Civis Student Council today. For our part, the Commission is working hard to support you. The European Universities are a game-changing initiative. That's why they are at the heart of the three policy communications we published in September, which present the Commission's vision for the European education and research areas and, the, and digital education. A number of next steps were announced there. Over the next year, we will work in close cooperation with member states and stakeholders to co-develop a higher education transformation agenda. And I very much welcome CIVIS to take an active part. Our starting point is that such an agenda will need to help strengthening cooperation, lifelong learning and inclusion, and that higher education can be actors of change in the green and digital transition. We will provide for an enabling framework and dedicated initiatives to facilitate. Again, European universities can show the way. The Commission plans for the full rollout of the European Universities Initiative under the future Erasmus Plus programme in full synergy with Horizon Europe and other EU instruments. And throughout this process, we will be taking inspiration from European universities such as CIVIS. And we actually want you to be partner in the co-creation. To conclude, I hope you would agree with me that by building bridges within but also outside your alliance, you are real role models for the wider higher education community. There are high expectations, but you are on a good way. So let me tell you once more how much we value the hard work all your staff and students are investing in this initiative. I wish you inspiring discussions these two days and lots of success in developing CVs. Thank you.